In this video, let's understand about firewall rules and policies practically. So in our previous video, we discussed about the firewall rules and we understood theoretically, right? So we understood about what is firewall rules and uh, what is firewall and what are the priorities when you're uh, uh, writing new rules. So in this video, let's understand how to do it practically. So as you know, firewall rules are the set of rules that's used to control the incoming and outgoing traffic to the instance in and from the instance. If your firewall rules are uh, set to allowed, then it will allow the traffic to get in or go out. If your firewall rule is set to deny, then obviously the traffic would be denied. So let's see how to do it. As firewall is part of VPC, you can go and navigate it to networks part first. Under networks, you'd be seeing something like VPC network. Let's click it. So once you click that VPC network, you'd be landing here in the VPC homepage where you'll be seeing the list of networks. Okay, if you have created multiple networks, you'd be seeing that list. Else, you'd be seeing only the default network which was created at the time of the project creates. Means this is an automatic network. Or this is created automatically by GCP when you create the project. Okay, so if you see here, uh, there is an option as firewall, right? So in order to create firewall rules, go to firewall. And you can do in two ways. One is straightforward means you can directly write a rule and the other one is you can create a policy so when i say policy uh, you will be defining a policy and under that policy you, you can write multiple rules okay and in the third step you can associate this policy to any vpc so once this policy is associated to any vpc then all the list of rules that you have listed and inside that policy would be applied to that VPC. So let's see one by one in the demonstration. So let me first show you how to write the firewall rule. So if you see here, there is an option as like create firewall rule, right? Just click it. So before that, if you see here, you will be seeing all the list of firewall uh, rules that is created already. Okay. So as we have two networks, this rules are for default network means the uh, default network and these are the rules that's created when we create a new network vpc vpc one fine so let's create a new firewall rule from here create firewall rule so you can name give any name for your firewall rule so i write as like firewall rule one Okay, and you can add a valid description here. So as you know, in production, you'd be you'd be having a multiple rules. So make sure to add the right description for your better understanding. So when it comes to log logs, it's up to you. Uh, so if in case you are turning on your log, you'd be seeing multiple uh, logs generated because all the traffics are monitored, right? So I'm just uh, for demonstration, I'm keeping it on the reason to show you uh, once we create the firewall rule, if we click this log right on, if we make it on, then we can see what are all the instance that is associated to this particular rule. Okay, fine. So you can enable it for demonstration if required. Then just coming here and I, I need to define to which network I this particular firewall rule should be applied. Okay, so I don't want to touch anything in my default network. So I'm just getting it applied to my uh, new network, which I have created. That is VPC one. Fine. So as you know, whenever you have uh, you, you are creating firewall rule, uh, you can create from the priority from zero to 65,535, where 65,535 is the least priority and uh, zero is the highest priority. And uh, once again, uh, there, there is already an firewall rule, the default firewall rule, which is available on the priority, the least priority 65,535. So when you're writing a new firewall rule, you can give any priority from 0 to 65354. By default, it's showing us like 1000. Maybe I'll make it as like uh, 1010. Okay. And you should define, is this rule is applied to ingress or egress? So ingress means that it's for incoming traffic and egress is for outgoing traffic. 
okay incoming towards the gcp and egress is going out from gcp and so uh, what action to match so if the condition satisfies what it should do whether it should allow the traffic or to deny the traffic so the condition we'd be giving here as like the source address that information we'd be giving here but what action to perform if the uh, this below defined condition matches so i'm just writing as to allow okay and when it comes to targets you can um, either you can go with all instance if you select this all instance it's applicable to all the instance in the network which is created and if you want a specific target means specific instance you can create it and if you want to create rules for a specific service account that is also possible so as it's a demonstration i'm just going with all instance okay and the source filter also you can have multiple things as like you can do with ipv4 ipv6 source tag and service account based so i'm just going with the ip address based and that to with version 4 so uh, it's telling from which source if the traffic comes i should allow because it is an ingress right so what i'm telling uh, maybe i'm just defining any ip right 10 uh, maybe 10 dot 10 dot 10 0 dot 0 slash 24 okay so i'm defining that if any request that comes from this particular source network allow him okay and you can add a secondary source filter as well and when it comes to protocol and ports uh, either you can specify port uh, means you can uh, if you are aware about the tra uh, traffic you can specify whether it's tcp or udp or other services and here too you should give the port number say for example if you want to allow http maybe you can give port number 80 here okay uh, it's in tcp but uh, t http and https are already uh, available as a default one maybe it's not uh, allowed but we can uh, add it directly when we are creating the vm instance right so but this is how it is in production you will be seeing multiple ports and protocols so based on your requirement you can fill informations here or else uh, just for demonstration i'm allowing all okay or if you want to allow only specific set of uh, uh, services and port so in addition to this particular uh, source ip address so currently what i'm doing any traffic that comes from a uh, source source network 10.10.0.0 .10 .0 .0, i'm allowing it okay but uh, if you are going with specified ports and protocol what happens any traffic that comes with uh, this from this network is not allowed only a specific traffic as like if you are going with uh, uh, ssh whatever it is if you are specifying the service then the specific service which we have mentioned here that is coming from this particular source network only that is allowed okay but for demonstration i'm just going with this thing and if you see here you'll be seeing an option as like disabled rule okay this is what enforcement means if you uh if you want to enable it or if you want to make it active it should be enabled if you keep it disabled then your policy will be disabled your rule will be disabled so i want to just enable it so it's enabled create so it takes few seconds to create Right. Uh, it's created so this is the rule we have created firewall rule one and to which network it is applied it is applied to the vpc1 network which we created in the last video in the vpc video right because we don't want to make any changes in the default network so whatever testing we want to make it in the new network the testing network which we created so this particular firewall rule is applied to vpc1 okay and it's what type of a uh, rule it is it is defined for ingress in, in, in incoming traffic okay for, that's applied to all all targets we have not mentioned in specific targets right it's mentioned for all targets and uh, when it comes to filter it talks about the ip address the ip address which we defined here maybe we can go inside and see it's just a brief okay and it, it it is allowing all ports if you see the other things if you see it's it this particular rule is allowing only tcp service with port 80 which is http and this is allowing only icmp service right 
So I select the same, but here we have allowed all, all the service. So whatever that is coming from this particular range. And action is set to allow. Priority is 10, 10. Fine. And if you click here, okay, this is the rule which we have created. And also you can see a number of hits. Hit count, it says zero because uh, currently there is no traffic to our uh, VM, right? But in production, you'd be seeing multiple hits. So if you just uh, click here, you scroll down it, it, it will be giving all the informations okay it would be giving all the informations ingress what are the ip ranges we allowed protocols basically the information is what we configured earlier that's it and if you come down if you see here from here you'd be seeing all the list uh, uh informations about the hit Okay, in the last one hour, how many hits it came, at what time, what is the range of the hit, from which source to which destination, th those detailed information we could see here. And if you see that uh, rule, means this rule, which whichever we have created now, right, the firewall rule one, to allow any traffic that's coming from the source 10, 10, 0, 0, slash 24, it is applied to this two VM vm3 and vm4 it's not that we explicitly added uh this firewall to uh firewall rules to this vm how this is uh, added to this because as you know firewall rules which we created now it's an global one we have defined it only to the network part okay which network we have added to the network vpc1 as we my vm3 and my vm4 these two vms are part of vpc1 network now this firewall rule is applied to both the vm if you see now uh, we, we do have other uh, vms but they are in the different networks that is default network so that's the reason it is not applied i think i i have disabled it that as well okay i disabled it but however maybe i can show you also if i create a new instance If I create a new instance with the default network, uh, okay, maybe I can just keep us like my VM one because already we have three and four, right? Let it be VM one. So let it be in US central only. Let it be one GB. That's it. I'm not making any um, changes in the network. Okay. So as I am not making any changes to the network part, what will happen? Default by default this particular vm will be created in the default network and not in the new network which we created as like vpc1 okay as this vm is created in a default network this particular firewall rule will not be applied to this particular vm which is vm1 let me refresh it It takes few seconds. Yeah, it took IP address from default network June. Fine. Let me come here and refresh and see whether is there is any changes. Means basically, let's understand whether that newly created VM is added here in the logging section of this firewall rule. Never. See, because the newly created VM is a part of a default network. Okay. And this firewall rule which we created now is, is assigned or mapped only to VPC1 network or the new network which we created and it's, it's not assigned to the default network okay so if in case we assign this rule to the default network then in that case we would be seeing all the vms as well maybe i'll show you one more example i'll create one more vm and now for this vm explicitly i'll i'll make it uh, deployed in the vpc1 network so in that case once this vm is created if you come and uh, see the log section of that firewall rule we can see the new vm is added there as well this firewall rule was applicable to that vm as well because it is part of the vpc1 network i just name it as like vm2 because earlier vm3 and vm4 only was there in our previous video we might have seen four vms vm1 2 3 4 so uh, i just deleted vm1 and 2 once i completed the lab okay so that we are we are seeing only three and four now don't get confused so in the region i'm just choosing south to delhi because in our VPC one network, we have only one region uh, have with the valid subnets, right? So I have 
I am deploying this VM here in the region and reducing the cost. Okay, now I am coming to the advanced section and let me try to make changes here. Okay, so here in the network interface configuration under default, default network is chosen. I can change this to my VPC one, the network which I have created. As you know, if you have multiple networks created, it will list out all the network. As of now, we have created only one VPC in addition to the default one. That's the reason we are seeing only two. So by default, it will be choosing to the default, but I want this VM to be deployed in my new VPC network, which is VPC one. So I'm clicking it. So once I clicking, uh, selected that, the IP segment, whichever I have associated to this VPC one for this region, uh, South Asia two is coming here, shown here. That's it, done and created. So now what will happen? A new VM will be created in which region? Asia South 2, but in same as like this VM3 and VM4. It will be deployed in VPC1 network instead of default network. So once it's deployed in VPC1 network, you would be seeing the same VM uh, here as well. As like VM2 will be newly added. It takes few seconds. Great, it's created. And if you see the IP address, it is same as like a VM3 and VM4. Okay, it, it received the IP from the same subnet. Fine. Let me go here. And one more thing, if you'd be seeing here, uh, means actually this only this two is an active VM now because I have stopped the service of this both. And that's the reason you are not seeing the green tick mark here. And also you are not seeing the public IP here. Okay. Uh, just not to waste my uh, money, I have uh, disabled VMs when I, when it is not in used. Okay, fine. So now I am just refreshing my firewall rules. See, the new VM is mapped. So this is how firewall rule is applied. So just a recall, uh, firewall rule is applied to the network it's not applied to any region so what happens when you apply a firewall to uh, firewall rule to uh, a network vpc1 all the vm instance that is applied all the vm instance that is created on vpc1 has the same firewall rules okay it's using the same firewall rules and that's the reason we are seeing it okay and we can see the, all the details informations here and as you know, you can see all the logs, those stuffs here, because we have enabled logs. If in case you have not enabled log during the firewall rule creation, you cannot see it. So this is how we can uh, write a firewall rule. And if you want to delete it, click here to delete and click here to delete. And it would be deleted. It is getting deleted. So whenever you are practicing uh, in your personal accounts, make sure that uh, once you have uh, done the demonstration, once you have uh, practiced it, make sure to delete uh, the uh, unwanted resources to avoid cost. Okay. So now we have created how to create the firewall rules. Let's understand how to create policies. So in order to create policy, just click it. So as I said earlier, in a firewall rule, you will be creating a rule and it will be directly assigned to the um network however in a policy it's a uh, you can consider this as a set of rules okay so you'd be creating a policy and you can define multiple firewall rules within that policy and as a third step you can associate this policy with a vpc network okay so just for a demonstration i'll show you how to create this and associate with the vpc so rest other things are the same it's like how the uh, rules are created firewall policy dash one okay and you can add a value description here and uh it's in global one the policy whichever i'm creating is a global one not a regional base so i'm just going with global click continue and in the rule number two you can add rules to here okay uh 
first policy just to name it in the first step you have just named it and you have specified that you are going globally it's not a regional based because so far it's not added to the network right so that's the reason it is asking whether to go with globally or regional base okay and in the second option in the second part you are creating firewall rules in that policy so for a sample i can create one firewall a rule so again it is asking for the priority i am just giving 10 20 because in the previous rule i have given us like 10 10 anyway it's not in uh, active now it's deleted you can enable logging also you can define as like it's ingress or aggress aggress and what action to be done either to allow deny or go to next all instance in the network because i have selected it for all ip range you can define any ip range as like maybe i just go with 10 30 30 0 slash 24 okay uh as similar as how we created the firewall rules in the previous earlier okay if you want you can go with the protocols but for demonstration i'm just going with ilo wall and create it and you can create multiple firewalls rules here okay basically when we go for a policy is when we want to create a multiple firewall policies um, for a specific reason okay in that case we would be going for firewall policies so you can uh, define multiple policies here and then you can click continue as it's a demonstration i'm just stopping it for with one policy okay continue so once it is continued in the third step we need to associate it okay you have created a policy you have created multiple rules within the policy now the third part is policy is created right we need to associate this policy to the network so in order to do so here associate okay so you need to define to which network you are going to associate this is a default one right and this is the vpc one uh please make sure whenever you are uh testing practicing hands-on right not to disturb anything in the default okay maybe you can create multiple networks or whenever it is make sure you are not touching the default one so that we can understand because if you go with the default right you already there are a lot of um informations available right already there are a lot of policies applied uh, all the regions as ip subnets so those kinds of stuffs so whatever you are practicing practice in the uh, separate network so that it will be easy for us to understand okay so i'm associating it with the vpc1 network okay so it's showing like that continue create so three steps that's it so if you scroll down you'd be seeing a new policy see network firewall policy this is the policy that is created it's getting created and you can see that it is associated with vpc1 it will show now it will take few seconds maybe if you don't want to wait you can reload also see my new policy is created okay and it has five rules it's saying i have written only one but the other one the default four is also applicable right uh global and it's applied to one vpc network let me go and check by clicking the policy so this is the rule it is which we have created it okay and it is in global mode it is associated with vpc one network so this is how uh, you can write firewall rules or firewall policies and get it associated with the vpc1 so what happens now it's similar as like a firewall rule so this policy is applied to so once it is applied uh, so whenever this new policy is applied to a vpc network whatever resources that we are creating in that vpc network will be uh, having the same firewall rules for the policy so this is how um, the firewall policies and rules works and you can create the same way.